Hello, this is Debbie Kay with the League of Women Voters of Portland. We're here with the support of Metro East Community Media to interview candidates running in the 2020 primary election. With me today is Janelle Bynum, running for State Representative District 51. Welcome, Janelle. Thank you. Tell us about yourself, why you're running for this office. Well, my name is Janelle Bynum. I proudly represent House District 51, which is the communities of East Portland, North Clackamas, Damascus, Gresham, Boring, and Happy Valley. I am a mom of four and um, trained as an electrical engineer and a business owner. And um, the reason I'm running is because I want to continue my advocacy for education. I want to make sure that our Main Street businesses, um, their voices are elevated at the table and that we continue to look forward to um, being able to pass on our wealth, whatever it is in any form, um, to the next generation. Thank you. Tell me what challenges have been and will be created by this pandemic to the effective and efficient administration of Oregon state government. How do you propose to meet those challenges? So I think first and foremost, we're seeing that uh, population of people who never imagined themselves um, falling through the cracks are. Um, we have our independent contractors, our gig economy workers, um, our undocumented um, family members. We have a whole swath of people um, who ordinarily wouldn't, um, maybe they don't show up on everybody's radar, but they're really showing up on our radar now. Um, our Main Street businesses, um, we had expected help from the federal government, and I know probably by the time that this airs, things will change dramatically, but uh, we are not receiving um, the assistance that we once thought we would. And, um, and then it's going to require a lot of cooperation and coordination on the part of all of our elected uh, leaders um, to deal with the financial fallout in our government um, with our budget next year. Thank you. Traditionally, the legislature has conducted the decennial redistricting process, which will occur next year in 2021. Are you comfortable with the current redistricting process? And if not, how would you seek to change it? Well, there are people who are much smarter than I am, much more skilled in this area. Um, but here are my concerns. I, I try to lead with my values. And one thing I want to make sure of is that the voices of marginalized communities are at the table and have a loud, um, a loud and, and real voice um, when it comes to whatever changes uh, we make. The other thing I wanted to point out was that I represent what they call a swing district. And actually, the last time I ran, um, my voters were one third D, one third um, R for Republican, one third non affiliated or smaller parties. And so for me, uh, making sure that all voices were at the table, um, regardless of your stripe, I think is important. Um, and as a, as a minority, um, I think that a lot of times, you know, people default to majority rules. And that's the, the setup that our country um, has. But I do think making sure that uh, the voice of the minority, the voice of the marginalized is um, never drowned out. And so, uh, like I said, there'll be people smarter than me um, at the table, but those are the values that I'm going to bring to the conversation. Thank you. What are your thoughts on cap and trade proposals intended to mitigate climate change? A good idea or not? Why? Well, I think um, if I can just address that, we, um, we had a breakdown in our last legislative session. It's not something that I'm proud of. Um, and I think that we, I voted um, for the cap and trade proposals. Um, and it's important to people in my district that we do something about the environment. Um, but I also think it's important to all Oregonians, um, this place that we call home, this place that we love, that we maintain clean air, fresh water, um, and that we address uh, climate change. Um, but I do think we have to have a much deeper emotional commitment um, that unifies our state rather than tears it apart. So I'm hoping um, in the next um, legislative session to be one of the people who's a bridge builder um, to get everyone back to the table. Thank you. 
What is your view of the suggestion that the legislature suspend collecting the taxes to fund the 2019 Student Success Act? Well, one of the things I'm most proud of is getting additional funds um, through the Student Assess Success Act um, to our schools. And I'm not interested in turning back my back on that um, commitment and that effort. That is, um, that is the main issue that I ran on, and I'm so proud that we were able to accomplish that. As I mentioned, I have four children. Their education is of paramount importance. Um, Oregon has been historically underfunding um, our education system, and I'm not willing to turn my back on that. As a business owner, I know that it is hard. Um, I, uh, based on the current environment, will likely not be able to meet that obligation April 30th. And so I'm going to ask for um, basically a hardship waiver and make payment, uh, make a payment plan as best I can. But um, turning back on our children, it's just not an option for me. Thank you. We have some time remaining. Is there anything you would like to talk about? Well, one of the things I've been working on in my office is mental health supports. Um, not only are we going to need um, finances to get us out of this, um, but we're also going to need to um, make our, our mental health support system far more robust than it is. And we have a um, we have an issue right now where our uh, training requirements are so much more than our neighboring states. And so I'm working um, in, in earnest uh, to make sure that we have a pipeline of people who can meet the mental health needs of our state. So um, that's very important to me. And I look forward to actually working on that uh, for years to come because keeping our minds and our bodies um, in shape is, is just as important as being financially healthy. True enough. One more minute, what else would you like to offer? Well, I want to offer um, people some sense of hope. Um, these are very difficult times. Um, many of us have, are experiencing um, tragedy like we've never experienced before. Um, but, you know, as I sit here today, I, I can see outside my window beautiful cherry blossoms. I heard birds chirping this morning. It's a beautiful blue sky. Um, we are in the midst of a pandemic, but Mother, Mother Earth has a way of cleansing herself. And, um, and I believe that um, this time that we've had to, to spend together with our families is precious. And I hope that people will use it to come out of it um, better than, than the way we entered it. So I offer hope. Thank you. Thank you. This has been Video Voters Guide. The primary election is Tuesday, May 19th. Please be an informed voter. Visit vote411.org to learn about all the races on your ballot and exercise your right to vote. Thank you for coming today.